Did you know that de Moivre's theorem makes it easy to calculate the power of a complex number? I've taken great care in this video to break down how to do this in four easy to follow steps. Welcome to Understand the Math. We've created free guided notes that you can use as you watch this video and placed a link to them in the video description below. There's space in the notes where you can fill out the answers to the examples that we're going to do because you can't just watch someone do math, you need to do it too. Let's say we need to find one plus i raised to the sixth power. This complex number is written in rectangular or standard form. To compute this power, we need to write our complex number in polar form and then use de Moivre's theorem to compute the power. This theorem provides us with an easy to follow formula. It's assumed that n is equal to an integer. Let's go over the steps to calculate the power of a complex number z is equal to a plus bi. Our first step is to find r from the formula r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Our second step is to find theta. If our complex number is in quadrant one, then theta is equal to the inverse tan of b divided by a. If our complex number is in quadrants two, three, or four, we have to do two steps. The first step is to find the reference angle, and that's equal to the inverse tan of the absolute value of b divided by a. And our second step is to find theta from the chart below. Our third step is to apply the formula given by de Moivre's theorem. Our last step is to simplify z to the n, and we'll simplify it so that it becomes a complex number in the form z is equal to c plus di. Let's dive into our first example. Our first step is to find r. r is the square root of a squared plus b squared, and this is equal to the square root of one plus one, which is equal to root two. Our second step is to find theta. We notice that one plus i is in quadrant one, so theta is equal to the inverse tan of b divided by a. This is equal to the inverse tan of one, and we know that the tangent of pi over four is one, so our angle theta is equal to pi over four. Our third step is to apply our formula. Z to the n is equal to r to the n times cosine of n theta plus i sine n theta. And let's make a note that for our problem, n is equal to six. This gives us one plus i to the sixth is equal to r, which is root two raised to the sixth times cosine six times theta, which is pi over four, plus i sine six times pi over four. Our last step is to simplify. We have one plus i to the six. The square root of two raised to the six is eight. And then we have cosine three pi over two, plus i sine three pi over two. Cosine three pi over two is zero, plus i times sine three pi over two, which is negative one. This gives us a final answer of minus eight i. Let's now look at our second example. Our first step is to find r. r is our square root of a squared plus b squared. r is equal to the square root of minus two root three quantity squared plus minus two squared. This is equal to the square root of four times three, which is 12 plus four. So this is equal to square root of 16 or four. 
Our second step is to find theta. We notice that our complex number is in the third quadrant. So theta is going to be equal to pi plus our reference angle theta sub r. Theta sub r is the inverse tan of the absolute value of b divided by a. So this is inverse tan of the absolute value of minus 2 divided by minus 2 root 3. This is equal to inverse tan of 1 divided by root 3, which we know is equal to pi over 6. Our theta then is equal to pi plus pi over 6, which is 7 pi over 6. Our third step is to apply our formula. We have z to the n is equal to r to the n times cosine in theta plus i sine in theta. And let's make a note that n is equal to 5. This gives us minus 2 root 3 minus 2i raised to the fifth is equal to r, which is 4. So we have 4 to the fifth times cosine. Our n is 5. Our theta is 7 pi over 6. So 5 times 7 is 35. So we have 35 pi over 6 plus i sine 35 pi over 6. Our fourth step is to simplify our calculation. The first part that we'll do is simplify 35 pi over 6. Since this angle is greater than 2 pi, we'll start by subtracting 2 pi from it. We have 35 pi over 6 minus 2 pi, and that gives us 23 pi over 6. That also is greater than 2 pi, so let's subtract 2 pi again. And that gives us 11 pi over 6, which we can use because it's between 0 and 2 pi. We have minus 2 root 3 minus 2i to the fifth. Hang with me, we're almost done. This is equal to 4 to the fifth. 4 to the fifth is 1024. And then we have cosine 11 pi over 6 plus i sine 11 pi over 6. This is 1024. 11 pi over 6 is in quadrant 4, and the reference angle is pi over 6. So cosine 11 pi over 6 is root 3 over 2 plus i sine 11 pi over 6. It's going to be negative, and we get a minus 1 half. 2 goes into 1024, 512, so we get 512 times root 3 minus i. So our final answer is 512 root 3 minus 512 i. I would suggest that you do a few more problems to get comfortable using this formula. If this video has been helpful to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. Keep believing in yourself and have a great rest of your day.